Hello everyone, Denise here. I hope you're doing well. Um, wanted to come on today and um, make some sense of everything that's going on right now and just how everything is um, converging and, and uh, kind of according to God's word. So I would like to share some thoughts and scripture with, with everybody and, and hopefully um, be an encouragement to you. I mean, God knows how to take care of his own, okay? And so if you are a born again believer in Christ, um, God knows how to take care of you, even in the midst of the storm, okay? In the valley of the shadow of darkness, you know, he's with us and, and his word is true and he takes care of his children no matter what. So, um, and he's in control. But right now, um, there's a lot, we're in the end times, and God's word is true, and it's all written, and and exactly what is happening is exactly what is in God's word, and so we should expect all this if, if we're awake. Um, this is no surprise for us. We are not going to be caught off guard when he comes um, to take us out, you know. He's not coming as a thief in the night for us. We're expecting him, and so during these perilous times um which bible scripture clearly indicates that we as believers are, are going to be here for and that's where we're at right now um you know jesus did talk about in matthew 24 about birthing pains and the signs of you know his second coming which comes seven which comes seven years after we're taken you know after well the tribulation period and all that so um we're about ready to be caught up, okay? Um, we're, we're at the very end of the birthing pains right now with everything converging like it is right now, faster and faster and, you know, all these liars around deception, Jesus said, would be the number one thing happening. Um, you know, pray that no one deceives you. Do not be deceived, all right? And deception is everywhere. I mean, liars, um, just wickedness everywhere these are very dark times and um so i'm going to share some scripture um with you and i have been taking notes um over the last few weeks in between working 12-hour shifts and just running our home you know we have a full-blown apartment now and just very and then just the attacks that come on us you know i mean we're we i get attacked every day um not going to get into all that if you're uh, a believer in Christ, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about, just things that come up and pop up, but God sees the road ahead, and, and it's just the things he brings um, to my attention that and, and leads me, because he is the lamp under my feet and the light under my path, and just some of the things that he leads me to do, and, and I might not have made that phone call or done that thing to find out, and if I didn't do that, I wouldn't have found out what what is happening and what could happen to me. Um, and stop it, you know, it's just, I'm not going to get into it all, but uh, again, if you, if you, you do understand what I mean, if, if, if you're a true believer, so, um, thanks be to God that he sees the road ahead and, and he guides us and, and just, you know, teaches us to, to fight and to stand, to take a stand against all this wickedness and because greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. All right. So, um, while we're still here, we are to be a light in the world. We are the lights in the world. Um, we're about to be removed. So um, we need to share, um, you know, God's word. And so that's what I would like to do today. And so as I'm sharing God's word with you, I'm going to flip the, the camera around and just kind of put it on the TV screen of the headlines, kind of what's going on that you can see um, as I'm going over my notes and and hopefully this will help some of you to make sense of all this because none of this is going to make sense outside of the Bible I've mentioned it before um, it's just the way it is because God's Word is true and we are living in Bible and times so I'm gonna flip it around and I'm gonna share um, my notes with everybody okay and I'll be back so bear with me Okay, let's try to get a clear picture here. 
All right, so just looking at the state, looking around at the state this world is in, um, it's absolutely sickening. Um, I'd like to read some verses for you in the book of Isaiah. Okay, Isaiah is talking about the state of the world, and he is giving a warning back in his day. So this is a state the world is in in Isaiah 5.20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Okay, I mean, think about this. What the world is saying right now, looking at sin right now, involved in sin, enjoying their sin, celebrating sin, and they're saying this is good. And those who are looking at sin, who've been saved by grace through faith, um, and the Lord has changed your heart to look at sin differently and to say this is not good, this is offensive to the Lord, right? Um, and that's the state the world's in. A matter of fact, when, when we look at the world, it's almost as if we can't understand. How could you not see that this is not evil? Babies being murdered by the millions every year, and there's millions upon millions of people, maybe billions of people who feel it's justified. And it's okay, billions of people taking the Lord's name in vain using the Lord's name as a swear word, taking everything that the Lord has created and made that is good, and Satan's coming in or has come in and has perverted it. And the world says this is good, this is acceptable. And in fact, if you disagree with that, it's as if you say that this is unacceptable, then that's a hate crime. That won't be tolerated. You'll be canceled out. Can't you see what's going on? The whole world is sick. And it's only going to get worse. That's the crazy, scary part. I don't even want to go get into that, what's going on right now. But I will say this um, is absolute lunacy. I mean, if this was a movie, I would say this is so out in left field that I can't even watch it because it just doesn't seem feasible. But this is our reality right now. You're just using logic. What is being pushed right now is absolute, as absolutely illogical, okay? I mean, guys, I know I'm no doctor, okay? But the things that I'm reading and hearing and what's being pushed is absolute illogical. It doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. So, so either I'm messed up in the head, severely messed up in the head, and have an alternate view of reality or there's something really wrong with what's going on in this world and I think I know what the answer is I think the answer is that Satan has deceived the masses and they're blind to the deception they don't even know it and that should alarm you folks who have the Holy Spirit because if if you can't see that these are surely the last days moments right before the church is caught up just before the tribulation period begins the table is being set for the antichrist um, right now for him to just come right in everything set up for him politically religiously economically set up and then he's gonna run with the ball and if you can't see this is how it's all being set up i mean folks are talking about ufos okay pinch yourself the governments are talking about ufos and when we're gone they're most likely going to explain it away with UFOs, okay? The Antichrist, all right? These are not UFOs, these are devils, okay? Um, so the Antichrist is already set up because there's been talk and conditioning in regards to that, um, which I would like to read another passage for you. Uh, Micah chapter 2, verse 1 reads, Woe to them. Here's another quote verse. Um, when you read woe in the Bible, that is a stern warning, okay? Woe to them that devise iniquity, that work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it, because it is in the power of their hand. All right, so during Micah, there was a great amount of injustice being done, and the Lord does not like injustice, especially against those who are poor, weak, and can't defend themselves. The Lord has a special heart, for those people the Lord has a special heart for the orphan and for the widow 
And in Micah's day, the courts were corrupt, all right, just like they are now. Um, there was in, injustice and unbalance in the and where um, the, they used uh, weights that were not, tr they, they used things and people were paying more for their goods than they ought to pay and the rich were taking advantage of the poor and the Lord described the people of that day as being so evil that while they're still in bed, thinking, they're thinking up evil, how to devise and work their evil plans. And they practice that evil because they have the power to do it. They have the wealth, they have the money, they have the control, they have the power, and they have the influence. And I would even dare to say this verse in Micah chapter 2, verse 1 is present today. Folks, I believe that there are some very wicked, evil people out there that are completely sold out to their father of lies, the devil. That they have been devising and currently are devising iniquity as soon as they wake up. Their eyes open up, their minds thinking of more evil and more things that they can do to gain more power and control and at large put the world in slavery to them whether they know it or not. Um, they are mere puppets for Satan, and they have the power in their hand to do it, and they've been practicing it. And we need to wake up that there are elites in this world that are orchestrating, have been orchestrating this situation all along. And that's, and then what's coming around the corner, if you consider Romans chapter 1, okay, a very sobering section of scripture, um, I'm going to start at verse 18 and go to 32, okay? For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. All right, Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their heir, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covet covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. There's quite a list. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. All right, folks, this is one of the most sobering sections of scripture in the New Testament. We can see that the Lord here is describing mankind that have turned from the truth of the Lord and have gone after their own ways, pursued their own lust and desires, who have, even though there is proof that there is a creator, that nature itself bears testimony that there is a creator, they reject that and not 
and not worship him but worship the creature and so so what did the lord do the lord seeing that they chase after the vanity of their own imaginations and the foolishness of their heart the lord allowed to be darkened and god gave them up he gave them over to uncleanliness and lust of their own heart and then it goes into lusting one after another of the same gender and then it, it speaks of having a reprobate mind and god gave them over to a reprobate mind and then there's a description of the characteristics of these people all right so my lord i mean praise be to god that he saved us through the blood of jesus christ and if you are a born again believer if you've placed your faith and trust in the lord jesus christ almighty god who came into this world in human flesh who died on the cross for your sins and mine who knew no sin became a sin offering for you he died and rose again if you believe this that christ died for your sins have placed your faith in him you are now a new creature in christ all right i mean it's just amazing it's just it's amazing grace what he has done but if you look at what is being said here most of the world is in this state because they have turned from god their foolish hearts are darkened they have a reprobate mind and all they do is serve their flesh and so when we look at why is the world so sick i mean the world itself is not bad and when you read about this um the word in the bible you have to be able to distinguish the physical world that consists of nature, oceans, plants, animals, mountains, prairies, valleys, all that in itself isn't bad, but the system of this world is corrupt to the core. So you know God so loved the world, right? That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So God love this world but this world system is evil to the core okay first john chapter 2 uh, 15 through 17 reads love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world passeth away and the less thereof but he that doeth the will of god abideth forever all right these words are just so awesome we are not to love this world system and all the aspects of this world system do not follow politics okay do you follow economic i mean do you follow politics do you follow economics do you follow the message that this world has been programming the inhabitants with all right do not love those things okay but rather turn to the lord and abide with him find your pleasure on what god has to offer you for the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but of this world first john chapter 5 whosoever believeth that christ that jesus is the christ is born of god and every one that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him by this we know that we love the children of god when we love god and keep his commandments for this is the love of god that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous for whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in, in the earth, the Spirit, and the water and the blood and these three agree in one if we receive the witness of men the witness of god is greater for this is the witness of god which he hath testified of his son he that believeth on the son of god hath the witness in himself he that believeth not 
hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. And this is the record, that God hath given us to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. If any man see his brother sin, a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness, and we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true even in his son jesus christ this is the true god and eternal life little children keep yourselves from idols amen god's word is true people jesus christ is the truth the way and the life okay he is the only way all right so we read in the book of revelation about having to overcome having to be overcomers of this world okay so we need to look at these verses here in 1 John 5 and 4. Um, says, whoever is born of God overcometh the world. So if you are a born again believer, God has allowed you to become, to be an overcomer of this world. And what is the victory of overcoming the world? It's our faith. Okay, it's about faith. Who is he that overcometh with the world? Listen closely. But he that believe, believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Listen, it's not about us having to take up arms and fight the powers and principalities in this world who govern, will govern the people of this world. We become an overcomer of this world by believing that Jesus is the Son of God who died for our sins and is alive. Isn't that awesome? That's how we become overcomers, people, precious brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believing that Jesus is a son is the son of God makes you an overcomer. So we live in a world where evil is called good and good is called evil, darkness for light, light for darkness, bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. We have evil people who are devising iniquity as soon as they wake up and they practice it. And they have very bad plans for those who dwell on the earth. We see that the very wrath of God is about to come on this planet upon all ungodliness and that God has shown that he is the creator through his creation and yet man has rejected him and they have turned to corruptible things and made idols images of beasts of birds creeping things and worship these idols they've dishonored God they have followed uncleanliness through their lust of their heart and now God has turned them over unto their vile affections. They do things that were never meant to be, that are unnatural in the order that God created them. And God gave them over to a reprobate mind. And we also know that this world, the world system, is corrupt. We're not to love this world. This is a sick world. And the only way that this world can be healed and be made better is by Jesus's intervention. I don't care how much we we do to try to save the environment and the climate change and all this other stuff. This world is so polluted, so infested with toxins and waste and chemicals. We are way beyond reversing them. If you can see clearly, this world needs divine intervention. 
okay and only jesus christ king of kings and lord of lords can do it um we are at a place right now where the lord when he comes and takes his church out and what what light is left is no longer here and the one who restrains moves away how much more sickness will this world be experiencing i hate to think about it it's not going to be pretty it's not going to be pretty at all so when the lord comes back at the second coming we'll be right behind him on white horses okay he is going to execute judgment he's coming back to execute judgment at the battle of armageddon and he will intervene and punish the ungodly for their wicked deeds the lord's coming back to deal with ungodliness and we will be coming back with him so all the stuff that you see in this synthetic world when the lord comes back at the second coming is executing judgment on those who cause this world to be sick with evil and sin corruption deception and blasphemous speech even against the god that we worship and we love folks this is serious stuff here that this is how it all plays out and it is playing out um so if you want to entertain this fantasy of we're going back to normal everything's going to be okay plan your retirement and all those other aspirations that the world had for a few months um you know we might be going into the grand finale for the church and we might be out of here very soon so while you're in this sick world it might be you know brother i'm speaking to you brothers and sisters right now while we're still here in this sick world i mean it might be days maybe weeks i hope it's not beyond that but still continue to be a light let the lord use you for what he's called you to do and be hopeful because the lord is about to call us home all right thank you for tuning in i know we talked about some tough things um and the state that the world's in but be encouraged because your redemption is drawing nigh um okay, i'm gonna flip this around now so um so yeah just um look up look up you know um for for our blessed hope you know our redemption is drawing nigh and and we're just we're looking for the glorious appearing of our lord and savior god jesus christ to come and get us out of here what a blessed hope that is and we are to comfort um it says in thessalonians um we're, we're to comfort one another with these words about the rapture for thessalonians chapter 4 16 through 18 um read in um first corinthians 15 chapters uh, chapter 15 or chapter 15 50 through 53 you know about the rapture of the church i mean we are at the cusp of that right now we are at the very end of the birthing pains and just right at the cusp of the tribulation starting and just we're like right in between we're that little comma the, the ones we're going to be caught up that one generation that escapes death you know the bride of christ i mean we're about to go home um, God promised me it would happen in my lifetime that night when grace appeared, okay? My mom is, is in heaven right now, all right? Um, I wrote a little book about it, and I've given testimony on other um, videos about this, this amazing night, what happened, and um, she, I know <laughs> she's in heaven, and um, the dead in Christ will rise first. My mom will rise first and get her her body wherever you know my sisters may have it now um she, last she was in a she was cremated and in a box i don't know if they've we don't talk so i don't know if they scattered her ashes or so any of you that might have had loved ones who have died in christ and maybe they were cremated god creator of all things he he can find every speck of that dust and, and put it together and and change their bodies from corruptible to incorruptible and they get raised first okay so and then we who are alive and remain will be caught up with them to meet them with the Lord in the air in the clouds and so shall we ever be with the Lord and co therefore comfort one another with these words so I am so excited about this it's about to happen you know and and so we don't fear because you know greater is he that's in us than, than he that is in this world but for those who are not born again this can be some pretty scary frightening stuff and um 
So you want to make sure you're born again. And like that night, you know, um, I know my sisters think my mom was already saved, you know, I, maybe she was, maybe she wasn't, but I know at her very last breath, she called on God to help her and he heard her because he's our creator. He can um, hear our thoughts, okay, um, because he created us. And so I couldn't hear her thoughts asking, and I, I didn't understand what she was trying to say, but God heard her and he showed up instantly. So um, he is an amazing God. You know, all we got to do is turn our face to him. And so at her very last breath, she did that. And all I know is she called out to him and he showed up instantly right at her last breath, guys. And then that, all that happened and God showed up and the glory that filled the room that night was just, it, it was, I know it was only a very much just a very glimpse I couldn't have handled the full glory I would have been I would have dropped dead okay in this body but I was shown a glimpse I felt him in the room and angels and glory um, no evil at all whatsoever um, and so in, in the same way um, we are still here um, we're not caught up yet but we, we are seeing a very small glimpse and it's very bad it's very bad. We're seeing a very small glimpse of what's around the corner here for this planet. And um, you don't want to be left behind, guys. You do not want to be left behind. Um, just, you know, admit that, you know, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And not only that he died, but that he died for your sins, okay? That, that you are a sinner. And, you know, a lot of people seem to have a problem with that part. But, but it's so simple. You just... We're, we're born, you know, since the day of Adam, um, and Adam's and Eve, when they sinned in the Garden of Eden, um, then sin, you know, is everybody born of the flesh is born in sin. And so we need to be born again of the Spirit, and we need to realize that we're sinners. We are not good people. And if anyone could do it on their own by works, I mean, um, then God, you know, would not have needed to send come in the flesh, send his only begotten son into this world to die such an excruciating death. Um, we're all sinners. Um, there are none that do good. No, not one, the Bible says, you know. So God's word is true and every man a liar, scripture says. So um, we want to look to God, not, not to man. We don't want to hear what man has to say. We know we know the lies that are out there and the deception if we are awake to all of this, okay? And if you're not awake, you know, I, I don't know what to say, you know? And unfortunately, most of the world isn't, and that's what God's Word says how it's going to be. So um, I'm praying for you all, um, have been, and I will continue until God catches me away. So God bless you all. Um, take care. Thanks for watching.